Hey guys, I'm Max Chase. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here in beautiful Bogota. I keep calling it that. And it's a cool rainy morning. In this video, I'm just gonna walk and go get some breakfast. But I wanna talk to you about something. Cultivating gratitude helps build resilience. And it also helps restore joy and contentment in your life. So yesterday I had a negative experience. You can go watch those other videos. But uh, I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna continue being grateful. I'm gonna find little things every day, everywhere I go to be grateful for. I'm 37 years old. I'm an accountant. I'm divorced. It's really easy to just lose that excitement, you know, to lose that motivation. And I guess that the, one of the reasons why I came to Colombia is because I wanted to get that back. And I called this channel Mindful Visitor because I want to be more mindful in my life. And so after really thinking about it, I have to be grateful. So today, that's my mission. Be grateful for everything. I'm going to explore. I'm going to continue on with my trip and I'm gonna be grateful. And maybe, maybe that'll inspire you, dear viewer. <laughs> maybe that'll inspire you to be more grateful as well. What are you grateful for? Write that in the comments below. I think even if there's something bad happening in your life, there's still probably lots to be grateful for. I know it's hard when things get really bad to have that mindset, but I'll tell you, if you don't, man, I'm, so guys, I'm walking up hills. If you don't have that mindset, I think that's when things really start to go downhill for you as I'm going uphill. I guess it's kind of a suiting metaphor, isn't it? <sighs> going uphill in life, guys. I'm going uphill. So I'll tell you a little bit about me, my background. I have had, I don't know what the proper tense is, but me and alcohol are not friends. I have had a long and sordid history with alcohol. I've used it my whole life. Some people would say you got a predisposition for it. I don't know. Maybe I got a, an addictive personality. So guys, it's really hard to be mindful. I'm slogging up a hill. I had this all figured in my head. Now that I'm going uphill, it's like, and I'm thinking about my breath. I don't want to make this video sound so, so bad, but I came on this trip and I said, you know, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to quit drinking forever. And if you've got a problem with alcohol, I think maybe what I'm doing would help you as well. Just just throw everything away. I, I mean, figuratively, start over. Just start over. That means like, go on a journey. Stop whatever it is you're doing. Break that pattern that you have. You know, I had a pattern of alcoholism where I would, I'd say I'd start on Monday, I'd go to work, I'd be hung over. Tuesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, didn't usually drink. Thursday, I might have a little bit. And then Friday morning, I'd be like, hey, I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna drink. Then what do I do? I just go to the local pub and just slam it all back. Well, that cycle is very destructive, very destructive cycle. And so I guess in the context of danger, well, it's really dangerous for me to just continue what I was doing. So yeah, I'm coming here, I'm in Colombia. I'm taking some pretty big risks. I'm marching around with a camera, but what was my alternative? Continue drinking. Well, guys, look at this. This is just so beautiful. <laughs> I give you Bogota. So my danger of just staying at home and continuing that life cycle, what was gonna happen to me? I'll tell you what was gonna happen to me. I was gonna, I was gonna get fatter and fatter and fatter and more depressed and more depressed until finally it would just be the end. This looks like a good place to sit. Discovered a little hidden gem here in Bogota. Check it out. Hola. Hola. I wanted breakfast. This place over here looks nice and tucked away. I like being nice and tucked away. But yeah, well, I'm telling you about my personal life, you know. Coming here is a pretty big danger. I could just get stabbed or, or you know, hurt in some way or maybe steal on my cameras. And then I can't make these videos. That's the risk. The reward is that I get to have a wonderful experience. I get to meet wonderful people. I get to learn all the lessons that I need to learn. Maybe not all of them, but I get to learn a bunch of them. And maybe 
maybe just maybe if you like and subscribe and share and do all that stuff to help me build my channel maybe i'll get to turn this into a business and then that'll help me realize my dream where i don't have to go and just sit at a desk all day you know guys that's not for me as you can see i'm a very outgoing person el gato gris open restaurante oh my god guys like this is I'll show you this on Google Maps. I'll put a little picture here, but wow. Oh, there's a little place to sit up there. Okay, definitely sold. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Hopefully let me record. Hola. Hola, como estas? Como estas? Uh, que uh, uh, yo quiero desayuno. Desayuno. Sí, desayuno. Es posible allá? A la techa? Por favor, por favor. Terrazo, ¿no? Sí, okay, terraza, terraza, terraza. No techo. <laughs> Terrazo. Can't sit on the roof, but I can sit on the patio. Oh, guys. Whoa. Whoa. Check this out. This looks so cool. Ah, amiga, I'm gonna go up there. <laughs> Check this out, guys. There's like tons of little Little cubby holes. This is Spanish architecture at its finest. It's built to a human scale. <laughs> it's built to human scale. I think in North America, we kind of lost our way by getting rid of our creaky stairs. You could just keep going up. Oh, she might not find me up here. Oh, but this is where I'm gonna sit. Maybe not. Oh, guys, this is so cool. Oh, there's a camera watching me through that smokestack. Okay, I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit right here. So, you know, I talk about a lot of different topics and I kind of ramble on a little bit and I try to I try to wake up in the morning and have a focus for my video. It doesn't always work because I'm also open to adventure. I'm open to new experiences. And uh, that's what I mean by just throw everything away and just start over. Be open to some new adventures. Be open to some new experiences. I'm realizing that my problem was that I was stuck in a rut. <laughs> Buenos dias. Uh, recomienda me uh, a la carta. Recomienda me a la carta. Eh, Por favor. Vale. Entonces acá te traigo el menú en inglés. ¿Qué es tu favorito? Eh, favorito. <laughs> Puede ser este. Sí, sol res. Yes. ¿Cómo se dice en español king? Eh, rey sol. Rey sol. Sol rey sol. ¿Es correcto? Sí. Sun king. Quiero... Uh, café latte, por favor. Y le dos algo con gas. I'm so thirsty. Y un rey Sí, gracias. Dos aguas. Dos dos aguas con gas. Eh, ice, hielo. No hielo. No hielo. No hielo. Gracias, amiga. So, what I mean by just throw everything away and just just start over again. Like I was stuck in such a deep rut in my life. I gotta admit, guys, I would just be hung over so much that I was just, I just pray to die, you know? And I would, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because I have two daughters and I wouldn't want them, you know, to lose their dad. But uh, I, w I was so lost, guys, I was so lost. And I knew, I knew that when my mom died that I just had to, I had to make a change. I had to do something different. And what better time than the present? Just just do it now. It's like, I was, before in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, you know what, maybe in uh, five years, I'll have enough money that I can travel and I'll, you know, be able to just 
leave my kids for, you know, because they'll be adults. My kids are teenagers, by the way. I was thinking, you know, five years from now, I could just leave and go out and my, go out travel the world. But it's like, what? No, you got to, if, if you want to build something, it doesn't matter what it is. My goal is to travel and be a YouTuber. Honestly, that's a very kind of niche thing. I bet you most of my viewers don't actually want to travel and be YouTubers. But whatever your dream is, you got to start it now. Like, you say, well, five years from now, I'll start a business. Or five years from now, I'll, I'll do this or that or whatever. It's like, no, if you got a dream, if you've got something that you really want to do, don't wait. Start doing it now. And, and I'll tell you, this is the problem that I had and it's probably the problem that most people have. The first step is always the hardest. Think of it like math, okay? To go from zero to one, right? Like, that's incredibly hard. Like, to go from zero to one of anything. Any kind of goal, any kind of progress in life, if you're talking about money, that's also really hard. But once you have one, it's a little bit easier to get to two. And then it's even easier to get to four and then eight, and then 16, and guys, things snowball like that. Things snowball. And I'll, I'll point right now, okay, example. When I, when I left Calgary for this trip, I had no idea what I was gonna do. I was actually really scared. I, I, I was thinking, oh, what am I doing? This is, this is a risky thing. I'm gonna, what? I'm gonna walk around Columbia with a camera and, <laughs> and make YouTube videos instead of having a secure job as an accountant? And that was my first zero to one. But then, now that I'm here, I'm, at, I'm actually at one. I've had so many wonderful experiences, guys. So many wonderful experiences. One bad one. But now, I feel like I'm actually getting to two. And so, I mean, at this rate, I, I don't want to set my hopes too high, but at this rate, by the end of this trip, like, I'll, I'll be realizing my goal. It, it will happen, guys. And, I, and, and by the way, I need your support. You know, like and share and subscribe and do all that wonderful stuff. Here comes my, my agua. Gracias. Co uh, que, que las palabras, como se dice? Eh, vaso. Vaso. Okay, yeah, copa? vaso. Es una copa, copa vaso. Copa, copa pequeña. pequeña. Copa pequeña. Small. Sí, sí. Y agua, sí, gracias. Y gracias. gracias. Con mucho gusto. Dos botellas. ¿eh? Sí, sí, gracias. Sal. Sal. Y acá te dejo los utensilios. Sí, gracias. Con mucho gusto, caballero. Gracias. ¿Cómo se llama, señorita? Genesis. Mi nombre es Genesis. Genesis. Mi nombre es Max. Max, Max. Chase. Sí. Uh, ¿No visitas, Max? ¿No ¿De dónde eres? Oh, ¿de dónde? Uh, uh, soy de Canadá. ¿De Canadá? Soy de wow. Canadá. Sí. Bien, uh, uh, ¿Tú sabes uh, Canadá? Eh, sí, hasta el norte. <laughs> más, <laughs> más, más norte, más Estados norte. Unidos. Sí. Here, here's my. Uh, redes sociales. Okay. Tomalo, sí. Estás grabando para Sí, cuentas. grabando para mi YouTube, uh, Instagram, Instagram. Okay. Eh, uh, Twitter. <laughs> ah, vale, yo con esta. Sí. I will recommend. Uh, restaurante es muy bueno. Sí. Acá, sí. Muy bueno, muy... Eh, sí. Frecuentado. Sí, sí. Turísticos. Frecuentado. Frecuentado. Frecuentado turísticos. Sí. Vale, ya te traigo el desayuno. Sí, gracias, gracias. Con permiso. Oh, I'm so thirsty, guys. Here's a, here's a lesson. For, to, the mindful lesson. If you're visiting a place and you have a hotel room or something like that and you don't want to drink the water, like I wouldn't drink out of the tap, always have a bottle of water with you before you go to bed. I am so parched. And that's kind of why this video started off a little bit rough, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, hey, that's how committed I am. I wake up in the morning, I literally walked like two blocks away because I didn't want every video to start on the same block. And then I started it up and then I started walking and I was so parched and so dry. And I was like, oh my God, now I got to walk up a hill, get some exercise. But yeah, so my, you know, now I'd say that I'm actually getting to that point where now I'll be at a two, I'll be at a two, like on my goal. And to me, I, I, how I would measure that, right? Because I believe that goals should be, you know, smart goals, right? You can look that up. But how I would measure achieving my goal, I guess, subscribers. How many, how many subscribers do I have on YouTube right now? I've got 21 followers, guys. But those are people that I meet, you know? And I have a positive interaction with them. And then they pull out and then they message me. And actually, a lot of them I've been messaging back. Later on today, I'm gonna to go make a YouTube video. Actually, I should check that message right now. Just hold on a second. Okay, he hasn't gotten back to me. I asked this guy who, he says he's a street musician. I was like, hey, 
let's make a music video together. Let's collaborate a little bit on, on some of this. And so we're gonna meet. Ah, my coffee's coming, guys. This is exciting. Me gusta café, me gusta tinto de Colombia. Ah, listo, mira, un poquito de café. Gracias. Okay, guys, so I'm actually super confused right now. I'm super confused. Like, do I add this? Is this hot? Okay, so I. Okay. Okay. I ordered a latte and they bring it to you like that. You have to pour the milk or whatever into your coffee. So let's try this. Mm. I think it needs a stir though. Everywhere you go in the world, you probably drank in coffee or, or Colombian coffee, okay? Like if you live in any country pretty much, they import it from here. Obviously there's other places that grow coffee but I think it was like 40% comes from here. So to say that Colombian coffee like here that I'm having now is the best in the world because I'm in Colombia, it's like, well, it's probably not true because it's actually the same everywhere in the world because they export it. It's not any fresher. It gets, it gets prepared, you know, and then packaged and then sits on a shelf here. You know, same thing in Canada, same thing everywhere else in the world. I always like to express gratitude. And that's what I started this video off with saying, you know, cultivating gratitude helps build resilience and it helps restore joy and contentment in your life. And that's my lesson. That's my lesson. I woke up this morning and I, it came to me. I was like, okay, the experiences I've had so far have, have actually changed me. That negative experience has the potential to, to really make me bitter and jaded and afraid. So how do I overcome fear? How do I become more resilient? Show some gratitude, you know? I was thinking about that guy, and it's like he was just one guy. Go go watch that video again. If, you've, if you haven't watched it, go watch the one where I'll, I'll give it a name so it's obvious, like dumb gringo nearly gets robbed or something like that. You know, make it clickable, right, for, for YouTube. But go watch it again. I watched it this morning and I, I walked out of the shopping mall and I was just so elated and I was talking to people. I met those Venezuelans that they sketched me a little bit, but they turned out to be pretty cool guys. And I was just walking down that road and everybody that the one guy he taught me to say, to say, uh, God bless you. Oh, now I forgot guys. I, I was trying to memorize it this morning, but this is important. God bless you. God. Hey, if you're not religious, just, don't disrevel your heart because I talk about God and religion. I share my personal experiences. Like, find your interpretation of what I'm talking about, okay? For me, I'm a Catholic. I believe in God. And this is how I interpret the world, right? So, but don't be, you know, turned off because I want to learn how to say God bless you. Like, that is a very useful thing to say, especially if you're in a country where everybody's Catholic. Dios lo bendiga. Dios lo bendiga. Dios lo bendiga, guys. Maybe that's what I'll call this video. Dios lo bendiga. Because that, like that one street vendor, like I think he realized instantly, he's like, this guy's not going to be a customer. You know, I'm not going to buy anything that he's selling. You know what? An amazing thing. And, and the other day I was up at Montserrat, Montserrat, and during, during the mass, you know, when they bless the sacrament, that's like the, the holiest point. That's the most sacred part of the ceremony. And, and that's when I was really moved. I felt my mom praying for me in heaven. And when that guy said, Dios lo bendiga, he was praying for me. That was, that's a straight up prayer for me. Maybe he knew, he's like, five minutes from now, you're gonna walk around that corner and someone's gonna try to mug you. Now, I gotta say one thing about that experience, guys, because if you watch that video, it looks like the guy that I was originally talking to, the guy from New York, who spoke English, who called himself the God of Knowledge. It looks like that guy was the guy who tried to mug me. He, that wasn't the guy who tried to mug me, okay? That guy is a kindred soul, kindred spirit, okay? He was going to say something really personal and really, really profound that would have just been excellent for this channel, that my channel needs that kind of stuff. He was gonna do that. And then I tried to, you know, shovel him out of the way so we weren't standing in the way. And then that's when that other guy came up to me who's super aggressive. You see him for like two or three frames in the video, but he knocks me with his bike. And I had my hand on his tire, <laughs> actually, for, for like a couple seconds, because he hit me with his tire and I grabbed the rim 
right? Actually, I had black all over my hand because I grabbed it so hard. And then I shoved it back. You can't really see that very well in the video, but that's what pushed him away. Okay, now I'm not saying that I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Jocko Willink or, you know, any kind of big fighter guy, right? But like, I showed enough aggression to repel that guy. But I talk a lot about my unfair advantage in my business, in making YouTube videos. My unfair advantage is that I'm a big guy. Okay, that guy was, was a half my size, well, two thirds my size. Okay, I could have just grabbed him by the neck. If it was a straight up fight, you know, but he might've had a knife or something, stick me with it. So I don't want, I don't want to escalate the fight to that point, right? But I matched his aggression equally enough and then I left. And he had a bike and by jumping into traffic, that kind of made it hard for him to follow me. That's something to think about, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit self-confident because he could have he stabbed me, he could have pushed me into traffic, he could have done all kinds of things, but I grabbed his rim and I shoved it back at him. If you're traveling alone in Bogota and you're not 250, we'll just say 250 pounds, okay? If you're not 250 pounds and 6'1", you know, maybe, Maybe think twice about about blogging the way I am. Not saying you can't, okay, not saying you can't, but if if you, you know, were a shorter person or, you know, not as not as big, you could easily get pushed over and, and a guy like that would be able to take you down. They come up and it's, 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 it's surprising, you know, to somebody who's not used to violence, it's surprising to just all of a sudden be met with that level of aggression, like, whoa, right? But I don't want that to characterize my whole trip, you know? I, I guess a lesson for that, another lesson is that that whole walk, that 20, 25 minute walk was characterized by encounters, random encounters with 20, 30 people that I spoke with directly. And then maybe another 50 people that I didn't speak with, but that kind of saw me and, you know, maybe smiled or something. And so out of all those people, one guy, one guy, and I've said this before, I, I still believe this, Maybe I'll be proven wrong. I'm open to being proven wrong, but most people in the world are good. I believe that. Most people in the world are good. A few people in the world aren't good. And, um, and they're just so bad, actually, that it just kind of jars our minds, right? So it's, it's hard for us to, to stay focused on the bigger picture that most people are good. Most things are gonna be good for you. Most things are okay and you just have to be careful for those few things that aren't. Um, but we focus on, on the negative, you know? If you watch the news, you'd think, oh, the world is, is just going to heck. Guys, this is the most peaceful time in history to live. It was peaceful time. And I think things are actually getting better. And I know, I know there's a war in Ukraine right now that is potentially gonna be World War III. So I might eat these words, you know? Things might get really bad really quick, but hey guys, this is why it's important to cultivate mindfulness and gratitude and virtues and all these things because on a personal, personal level, you as an individual, okay, you cultivate these values, you're part of a bigger picture, okay? You're part of other people in society, like you're part of the whole thing. And I think what happens is that when enough people lose their virtues, when enough people become detached from society or, or cynical or nihilistic, you know, and, and not virtuous, then, then society starts to break down and then you start to get problems like that. And maybe I'm way oversimplifying it because I've never been to a war, guys. I don't know how horrible it would be or what leads up to it. But I look around here and there's a lot of moral decay, you know a lot of moral decay. So like the prostitution, like the, literally Bogota guys, Colombia is known for it. There's, it's like, if you go and just Google Colombia, travel Colombia, you'll probably find half the videos are just people talking about it. Cause that's what it is. It, a lot of people think that I come here just for that, right? And just for that. No, I don't come here at all for that, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Maybe get a little cookie guys. Mm. It's a good cookie. I'm grateful for that. I think the moral decay is a big deal, you know? And if people cultivate personal virtues, that kind of grounds society. Well, first of all, that grounds their families, and then that grounds the, their, their friends, and then that grounds society. And so, you know, I would look at that through a Christian kind of perspective, Christian virtues. I don't have to preach about that here. Guys, virtues are virtues. Love, 
charity, faith, hope, okay? You name it, right? And then vices are vices, like gluttony and sloth. I would look at that as a Catholic and I can interpret that through my own spirituality, but I'm sure if you're a, if you're a Hindu or you know Muslim, or even if you're an atheist, guys, I was an atheist for a long time. I don't wanna really talk about that right now. I'll talk about that in another video. But for a long time I was an atheist and I, I changed my mind. That might be hard for you to believe. I'm getting hydrated. <laughs> Hugo Naranja. Hugo de 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 Naranja. 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 Permiso de retiro. Ah, gracias, gracias. Eh, también sale con un café. Sí, no, no, no más, no más. Gracias. Gracias. Ya te traigo de Sí, gracias. Guys, I got a, I got a bit of a funny story to tell you about Hugo Naranja. Okay. I think it's funny, but when I was in Panama years ago, I, I just wanted breakfast, just like now. And I was like, I couldn't figure out how to say Hugo Narana orange juice, right? I knew how to say it in French. I thought, well, that's gotta be close, right? It's just orange. No. The Spanish for orange juice is unlike anything else. Like orange juice, just orange pretty much the same thing, right? If you kind of know, you can kind of just put a French accent onto an English word and they'd probably understand you. Not with Spanish. Hugo de, Hugo de, Naranja. Hugo de Naranja. Naranja. Hugo de Naranja. Hugo de Naranja. You know, there's two ways to enjoy food. You can eat it quick or eat it slow. Awesome. Look at that. Desayuno. Desayuno. Oh. Gracias. Con permiso, que disfrutes. Sí, gracias. Perdón, te Ah, gracias. <laughs> Guys, check this out. I got an omelet, I got some bacon, and I got some waffles. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Okay, I always like to say what I'm grateful for. And <laughs> when you get such good food, there's so much to be grateful for. Actually, there's so much to be grateful for in general in life. Yeah, I've got a lot of hardships as well, guys. Everybody's got their hardships, but I'm grateful that I've got two beautiful daughters and that, and that on the on Monserrate, I realized that I need to be a better dad. I'm grateful I had that realization. Now I'm gonna eat. No. No. Alright guys, just finished having a wonderful breakfast at El Gato Gris in Bogota. Highly recommend this place. You should definitely come here and check it out. Please like and share and subscribe. It really helps me out. So they, thank you so much everybody. Cheers.